Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 98, validate binary search tree. Given the root of a binary tree, determine if it is a valid binary search tree. A valid binary search tree is defined as follows. The left subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys less than the node's key. The right subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys greater than the node's key and both the left and right subtrees must also be binary search trees. So let's look at an example. Is this tree here a binary search tree? Well, typically we you know, wanna check these three conditions. So for this node five here, which is our root of our tree, is its value greater than all of the nodes in the left subtree? Yes, because it's greater than obviously one here. So that first condition is met is the right subtree is it greater than all of the nodes here uh, sorry less than all of the nodes in the right subtree no because we can see that five is greater than four which is not allowed and it's also greater than three but it's less than six so these two nodes here violate this second property and also remember that all of its children must also be valid binary search trees. So if we looked at this tree here, this is a valid binary search tree because the node four is greater than three and it's also less than six. So even though this subtree is valid because five is greater than four and three here, this is not a valid binary search tree. So all three of these conditions must be met. And that's the reason why this tree is not a valid binary search tree. So for the purposes of this exercise, a node that is a leaf is a valid binary search tree because technically it doesn't have any children. So this part is fine. You know, an empty binary search tree is a binary search tree. And because the nodes are empty, then this, this part also holds true. So a leaf is actually a valid binary search tree. So the way that we do this, we do this in a DFS manner. And we're gonna go all the way down to the leaves and we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, so obviously we know that a node by itself is a valid binary search tree if it's a leaf. So that means that three is a valid binary search tree and six is a valid binary search tree. So now we go up to four and what we wanna do here is pass in the largest value that we saw coming from you know this left side which was three, and also the smallest value we saw, which was also three. And on this side, what is the largest value we saw? Six, and the smallest value we saw was also six. So now at the four, we need to ask ourselves these three questions, right? Is three a binary search tree? Is the left side a binary search tree? It is, so left is a binary search tree. Is right a binary search tree? It is, and also is our value four, is it greater than the largest value we saw on the left? So is it greater than three? And is it also less than the smallest value on the left? So is this hold true? It does. So that means this here, which we verified earlier, is a valid binary search tree because it matches all the conditions. Now what we wanna do when we return to the next level is we're gonna return that, you know, we had a valid binary search tree from the right side here of this five. So we would return true that the right side is a valid binary search tree. And we also wanna return the smallest value that we've seen uh, here. So the smallest value is gonna be three and the largest value we've seen is six. Then we wanna do the same thing for this one. So this one is a valid binary search tree. So from the to the five, we wanna return true that we have a binary search tree that's valid the largest value, the, sorry, the smallest value we've seen and the largest value in that path. So what we wanna do now is at five, we need to check, okay, is the left side a valid tree? Binary search tree, sorry, yes. Is the right side a valid binary search tree? Yes. Now we need to check whether or not our conditions for the tree hold true. So what is the largest value we saw in the left subtree? One, is five greater than that? Yes, so that part holds true, but is five also less than the smallest value we saw on the right tree, three? No, this value is not, this part doesn't hold true 
Therefore, this entire thing is not a valid binary search tree because we have violated the, um, the right subtree requirement. So that's how we want to do it. We're going to do it in a bottom up manner and basically pass up whether or not our, you know, previous, uh, you know, whichever side we were going from was a valid binary search tree, the smallest value we've seen and the largest value. And then we need to make these checks. So let's actually go to the code editor and see how we might write this out because there's a few kind of edge cases that we need to consider. Namely, what happens if one side is defined, but the other side is actually a null node, right? That presents a little bit of a challenge for us, but no worries, we're gonna solve it. Let's go to the code editor and see how. We now need to validate our binary search tree and we have to write the code to do that. So remember that we want to use some sort of function which is going to tell us whether or not a binary search tree is valid. And we needed some extra information to make that decision, namely whether or not the node that we're asking for is a valid binary search tree. So we're going to get either true or false. Then we're also going to get the min value uh, that we need uh, in order to make the comparison of whether or not you know um, these conditions are met at a given node. And we also need the max value to make that same comparison for that right subtree. So we're gonna have some helper function which returns this tuple. And when we call this on the root, the return will be whether or not the actual entire tree is a binary search tree. But recall that this is gonna be a tuple and we're only really interested in this first value for the actual re result here. So what we wanna do is we're simply gonna return. So we're gonna say, return self.bst helper. We're going to call it on the root and remember that it returns a tuple and the first element is going to be whether or not it's actually a valid binary search tree. So we're just going to return that first element here, which is that index zero. Now for the fun part, we actually get to code the BST helper function. So we're going to say def BST helper and we're going to take in a node. Now, what happens if our node is null? Obviously, a null node is not a valid binary search tree. So we want to return false here. So we're going to say if not node, we want to say return false float infinity um, as the minimum value, float negative infinity as the maximum value. And this part doesn't really matter because we're gonna handle the case where we actually have null nodes separately. We just need to return something because if we hit a node that's null and we don't return anything, it's gonna mess ourselves up. We simply need to return stuff. We're not actually gonna use these values. So what we wanna do is just return something so our function doesn't blow up. But the values that we choose here don't really matter because we'll handle the case where a, ch a node does not actually have a left or a right child. So. Remember that we said that even though an empty, you know, a null node is not a valid binary search tree, all leaf nodes are valid binary search trees because they don't have any children. So technically they are valid binary search trees. So let's handle the case where we're actually at a node, uh, at a leaf node. And the way that we check for a leaf node, remember, is that if a node does not have a left or a right subtree, left and right subtrees, both have to be empty. So we're going to say if not, node.left and not uh, node.right, basically we are at a leaf. So leaves are always valid binary search trees. So we're gonna return true and we're gonna return. So what is the smallest value that we've seen so far? Obviously there's only one value in this binary search tree, which is the nodes value. So we're gonna return node.val as the minimum value that we've seen. And the maximum value we've seen, similar to the minimum, we've only seen one value, so therefore it's just whatever the node.val is. Now, if we're not at a leaf node, we need to actually process, um, you know, the left subtree, the right subtree, and then make a decision of whether or not uh, we have a, bi a valid binary search tree using the information from the left and the right and our current node's value. So we're doing this in essentially a post order traversal. We are going to the left subtree, then the right subtree, and then processing that information alongside with the parent. So remember that our function returns whether or not a given subtree, or I guess a tree, is a valid binary search tree. It returns the minimum value we've seen on that path, and then the maximum value that we've seen in that tree. Um, 
if we go you know to the left or to the right respectively so let's define those functions uh, those variables sorry so we say left is BST and then the left min whoops the left minimum the left maximum is going to equal to self dot BST oops helper so we're going to call it on node dot right node dot left sorry geez what is going on with me today uh, node dot left so we're going to explore the left subtree and check whether or not it's a valid binary search tree and we need to do the same for the right so we're going to say r is bst and we're going to say the right minimum and the right maximum is going to be self dot bst helper and we're going to call it on the, the right this time and now we need to do our checks so there's a few cases that we need to do here and we need to check all of them the first case is that for a given node, it has both a left and a right subtree, and those are both binary search trees. In that case, we just need to validate whether or not these two hold true, and if it's true, then we can return true to the next stage. So we're gonna say if, if the left is a BST and the right is a BST, so that takes care of this condition, and remember that we need to verify that our current nodes value is greater than all the nodes in the left, which is gonna be represented by L max. So if we're gonna say L max is less, oops, uh, less than our current nodes value, and remember that the right subtree has to be greater than the value of our current node. So the smallest value in the right subtree needs to be still greater than our current nodes value. So if this holds true, Basically this here, if our nodes value is greater than the left max and the right minimum, which means that our nodes value is greater than less than all the nodes in the right and greater than all the nodes in the left, then this tree here formed by taking our current node and the two left and right children is a valid binary search tree. So we can return to the next level. So we're gonna say return true. And remember, that the smallest value we've seen is going to be the L min and the largest value is going to be the R max. So we return that to the next level. Now we handle some other cases where let's say the left is a valid binary search tree, but we actually don't have a right child because it's empty. For example, you know, say if we're at this four and it had a, the three here, but this six actually wasn't defined then it, it would not matter because this is still a valid binary search tree even without the six. So we need to handle that case where the right child doesn't exist and we need to handle the case where the left child doesn't exist. So let's do that. So we're gonna say else if left is a binary search tree and not node.right. So the node.right on our current node doesn't exist and um, our current node.val is greater than the left minimum, then, oh sorry, the left maximum, apologies. Uh, if it's greater than the left maximum, then this is still a valid binary search tree. Just because one of the nodes is missing on the right is fine, it doesn't matter. As long as the left side holds up its end of the bargain, which is that the left subtree contains only nodes less than the, the nodes key, and then both the left and the right subtrees must be binary search trees. If, an, if a tree is empty, that's fine. Um, we don't have to worry about it. It's still allowed. So in this case, we can also return true. We can return true. And in this case, the smallest value is still gonna be the left minimum. And the largest value is gonna be node.val. And the reason for this is, remember, for it to be a valid binary search tree, node.val needs to be greater than all the values in the left tree which means that the largest value of the new tree that we're forming by taking the left subtree in our current node is going to be the node.val. Because that right subtree is empty, therefore we're not getting any sort of uh, R min and R max for us to use. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to do the reverse case where node.right is defined and it's a valid binary search tree, but the left is not. So we're gonna say else if, r is bst and not node.left and this time node.val is going to be less than whatever the smallest value in the right subtree is similar to how we had up here except this time we don't have to compare with the left because the left doesn't exist in this case it's also going to be to come true so we're going to turn true 
we're going to return in this case node.val because this is now the smallest element in our new binary search tree because remember node.val needs to be smaller than all of the values in the right and we're basically conjoining those two and therefore node.val will be the smallest element and then what is the the largest element it's still going to be whatever the right max is otherwise in this case these are the three cases where we would have a valid binary search tree either the left and the right are both BSTs and we have you know this condition being met or the left is a binary search tree the right node doesn't exist and this condition is met or the right is a binary search tree the left doesn't exist and this condition is met anything else is not a valid binary search tree because it invalidates one of these three invariants so therefore we can simply return false and in this case we don't really care if we're returning false we can basically return anything we want for these values because once we see a false uh, in one part then basically the entire tree is off and we don't really care at that point we are really only concerned with trues the second we hit a false that's it game over the entire tree basically needs to return true for this to become true let's just run this so we make sure we haven't made any syntax errors and we should be good to go to submit so cool we are done there so what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm well like i mentioned earlier the way that we're solving this is going to be a bottom up depth first search and we're doing this in a post order manner where we process the left child then the right child then the parent but that's just you know fancy way of just saying we're doing a depth first search here so to do a depth first search through this tree is going to cost big o of n time because we need to touch all of the nodes in the worst case and space complexity even though we're not actually defining any data structures here we need to take into account that we're doing a depth first search which is going to be a recursive call and we have to account for the recursive stack frames some interviewers will want to count this as big o of n space because in the worst case you could have a uh, very slanted tree that you're given and you could end up storing the entire tree in your kind of stack space there um, in which case it would be big O of n. If you don't want to count the stack space, it's going to be big O of one because we're not defining any data structures here. So we're going to say big O of one, if not counting uh, stack space, right? So that is going to be how you solve this problem. I think this is a really good question. A lot of problems on leak code um, are going to follow this pattern where you need to basically validate some sort of property of the binary search tree. Some of them require you to kind of do some summations based on uh, whether or not, you know, a path is a binary search tree uh, or something like that. But this is going to be, I guess, like a common template. And these are going to be your edge cases that you're going to want to take care of and, you know, make sure that you've handled all of them. So that's how you solve this problem. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this while you're preparing for your on-site interviews, please subscribe to my channel. I do a ton of videos on lead code questions and uh, I plan to make a whole lot more. So don't subscribe so you don't miss those. Otherwise, thank you for watching and have a nice day.